Okay, so register, which is a memory element, which we have been talking about since from the beginning. It can be a D flip-flop or any other kind of flip-flop, but we, we assume that we are using D flip-flop. The clock signal determines when to update the data. This timing diagram is a new to you. Here, when you see something like this, it means that it is not a one-bit value. So D is now multiple bit values, okay? So it, uh, whenever you see something like this in any digital circuit, in any simulation, it is a standard way of representing this. So this corresponds to a multiple bit value of D, okay? It's not a one bit anymore. And this cross X denotes that there is a change in the data. So for example, initial value of D was zero and it is changed to one and then it is changed to two. Okay, so this is how the values are changing. So I could write two bits, uh, if I assume that this D is a two bit value, let's say um, right here maybe. I So if I have D like this, clock signal here. So assume that D is initially two, uh, it's D is a two bit value. So initial value was zero, zero. And this X denotes that the value is changing. It could be from 0, 0 to 0, 1, or let's say it changes to 3, which is uh, binary 1, 1. And then it is changed again. It is changed to 2 or something like that, OK? So this change is not immediately reflected at the output queue. So output will remain same until this point, until this point. We are talking about the positive hash triggered. So this value is reflected at this point with a certain propagation delay. This is a propagation delay, OK? And assume that this value is changed again here. Or maybe let's go back to the same figure. So here you can see the values change again here at this point. But it is not immediately reflected at the output. It will only be read at the positive edge of the clock and will be reflected at the output. So here you can see. Um, if this is the right figure. Suppose the values change twice, multiple times within one clock period. What will happen? So what will happen if the values changed multiple times? Let's say instead of having values change and then change back again. So it was changed from 0 to 1 and then 2 and then let's say this is 3. So this is the positive edge and so previously the output was 0. This is the output Q. Suppose output was 0. When this value was changed it was red at this point, and now the output is 1. It will remain 1 until the next positive edge of the clock. Now at this positive edge of the clock, the value at D is 1, 1. What happened to this one? This will be considered lost, OK? Because you change the output so fa input so fast, it cannot be accommodated, cannot be read by the um, uh, by the digital circuit. So if you change the input before the next positive edge of the clock, let's say if it is period is 10 nanosecond, for example, if you change the input before the 10 nanosecond, then the output, then that value, that data is considered lost. Okay, so it will read only this at this positive edge of the clock. It will read the current data at D and it will reflect that value at the output, which is 1, 1. 
So, this value is considered lost. Okay. Okay. So, sometimes we need to control when do we want to write the data. So, we are considering adding another signal which is called write signal. When write signal is 1, only the data at the D input will be reflected at Q, will be stored at Q. Otherwise, it will not. So if you see the updated waveforms, the clock signals, here when the write signal is 1, whatever the value of D is, it is reflected at the output. Now we uh, lower down the write signal here. The clock uh, D is changed, the positive edge of the clock, it did not change the output. Okay, the output is same. Understand? When the D signal, sorry, when the write signal is uh, asserted again, when it is um, 1 again, then whatever the change was uh, in the D input, it is reflected at the output, at the next positive edge of the clock. Okay? So we will have the write signal to control, in, uh, control writing into register. When do we want to write into a register? Okay? Otherwise, if we do not have the write control signal, whatever data at the D input, it will be written into the register. Okay, so D input again, so this flip-flop is representing one bit storage element. So in order to store a 32 bit data, we need to have a 32 bit, 32 of such D flip-flops. Okay, so we can represent, instead of representing it like this, we can simply represent it like this uh, diagram, which is a 32 bit D and 32 bit Q output, and the right control signal and the clock signal. Okay, so this is one 32-bit register, and remember, RIS-5 has 31 more such registers. There are 32 registers, okay? So instead of representing again like this, we can simply represent it with this plane diagram. So whenever you see a structure like this, you should know what is actually going inside it. Okay, so we have register number 0, 1, 2, and so on. And every register has a D port, and a W port. D means where you write the data, and W is when you are controlling the data, when do you want it to write, okay? Um, 